hello everyone welcome back and thank you so much for stopping by i hope you guys are doing well so my people i hope you guys know this man dambelo who has been exposing nigeria politicians especially from the north so you guys know that nigeria politicians they don't like truth like whenever you talk against them they will definitely come after you so we had that efcc want to arrest dambelo at the end of the day dambelo told them that they need to apologize to him if not he's going to expose them more so he waited no apology and this is the latest one that he just released my people this is really really shocking how dan dj and his wife are making cannot drive this is really really shocking my people according to dambelo he said that whatever that he's doing he just wants to awake the conscience of Nottana's youth because they really need to be aware of what their politicians are doing to them my people just take a look at this short clip just look closely so that you can read the subtitle if you do not understand how sir and at the end of the day i'm going to play another video full video like full interview from Dambelo, the reason why why he's doing what he is doing. My people, just take a look at this short clip. Next level, waitaya AP Sinjar Kano, Tazuke, Jinanjar Kano, ne. Baranda Bakusuman Tabi, Jama Kukusawan the matter, the Turanchi and Achimata Momi, the lad of Chi Umi, the Kumachana Sanchi and Achiwa, I. Ama and Pekaran to the student and Napoleon. To Edenzaka Budi as with some banky, cana and pani the BVN. Who are the national with that to Mulura the BVN no mommy? Sana Macaleo and Asus and the Akabu Edwin and BVN. They are B. Oko, Haru Guda Arab in the Hulu. Yawang and Anna who come in a jarco. To Bokom Komo can company. One and company may soon as safari textile, no mommy need a yalanta. One day I could two rock at a direct the Asus and Jarcono. Zua wana asusu. Sata ma babu kana kana direct ake to the gabuhu say to kunya to wana asusu kana to ben chikash zaka gahash shapu kanye guda de di bu the taman and the shida. To asusu e kina a chikin adaba in the hudu. So kuma asusum we. Baran bako labari. Aya ampani de kanan abokin da momi mesuna kabir abasu. Domumbu de kampani mesuna show the general resources. Kabiru na samba kasahwana labari mba. To ga labari de damat daman sa. Kaini manaja na kampani de aki ampani de shina saataru kuda damat hanan jahar kanu. Ga misali. Rambiara gawa ta maya na shikra ta dububi de eshiram. Ana anturo kusa milyen tamanin de biu daga asu sungonat in jahar kanu. Na hukuma milyen sa tinda oku. Gauta million taman and debut tama, no gauta million certain doku. To come a semen and yak asa. No kumagas and a chiris in the million go, mo go, mo goma. Away when the company naked put the other nonkodadi. MJ multi purpose services. Jama wiat in the MJ multi purpose services. Yo Yanzak and Casa Kessi added and put in the one matter mummy, Tasata. Ama ana bun sound some the near a billion isherum. No one a billion isherum. Today, billion there yana nufin naira million million na goga million har guda dubu shine billion daya million dubu so ishirin million dubu ishirin shine billion ishirin me za iya yi da wannan kudi to dai za iya gyara duka matatun ruwa na jihar Kano har ma a fara gina wani sabokar sannan za iya gina kowace karamar hukuma ta Kano sabon primary guda bibiyu idan kuma asibiti za a je za iya biya wa mutane miliyan 1 naira 2020 na magani kuma ita wannan mata ita ce linzamin shugaban jam'iyyar APC na kasa kuma na hannun damin baba balabur jira 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 a ce duka girma jihar Kano Baba to Lumbi, a rustle what and the Zaza was the most ragged, but Ninja, yes, see what and number time. Mehaki can pin a come, Manapa to Lumba can arriva. Masamagana Sakachi, a booking parao. I answered, I keep a mad on the young one at a lochi mesa, co educans. To got him by. The Kura and Telakawa, I came, Samar, the Ayuka, the Bas Telepi. I hear the Telepina boy or Telakawa Kura and Shiga, come to Kura and Shigama Tunzecha Abinchi, your name Ilimi. It then Matumbashi the Kudi, Zaji Yunwa. Idan ka jinyuwa za ka yi tada turzo. Idan mutum ba shi da ilimi zai kada cikin jahilci. Jahilci na jawo turzo. To ka sace kudaden da ya kamata amfani da su wajen samawar jama'a abinci da ilimi wane ne yake jawo turzo ma? Ga tambaya ta ta karshe. Masu wawo da mutane kai su za a kama ana da zargin su da jawo turzo ma ko kuma masu wawo shi kudaden da ya kamata a yayo mutane ta lauci da su. A rubuta mu a comment Chai, my people, I hope you guys had the amount of money these people are talking about. And I love the last question that Bello asks, who should be arrested, the thief or the teacher? Ha ha ha. 
and i love the fact that he is using aosa you know to do his video so that his people will digest it and understand it like very well so that they will be aware of what their politicians are doing to them let me allow you guys to listen to the full interview from dambelo so that you get to know the reason why he is doing what he is doing dambelo good evening uh, from nigeria and thank you so much for joining us on the program Right, okay, uh, let's start this way. Help us understand how you categorize what you do and your motivations for doing exactly what you're putting on social media. All right, well, uh, basically what I do is uh, social political satire. And it's uh, a form of uh, educating people on what is really going on in uh, Nigeria. And... Uh, Basically, the goal is to sensitize and, and create a citizen awareness of uh, the socio-economic situation in our country. And, and how would you describe its impact on the polity right now? I mean, because for, for the most part, people were laughing at some of those contents that you were putting out. But then there's a deeper message in, in that satire that people are beginning to take notice of. What, what do you make of the influence of your content, especially on northern Nigeria? Well, I wouldn't say it's very influential. Uh, it's only building on what uh, a lot of great folks like David have already established. Um, however, it's a form of education. And as a primary school teacher here, uh, one thing I've learned is kids learn when it's fun. Kids learn when the teacher is funny. They pay more attention. Uh, they don't know what to expect. And I believe that Nigerians like to catch this. And uh, that should be part of the philosophy of creating content and, you know, raising awareness and uh, educating people. So I think uh, when you spice it up with a little bit of humor, people will kind of pay attention. And then later, they can digest what message is in there. And hopefully, they can make something out of it. At the onset, a lot of people will say, Pembelo usually tiptoes on the fence. The, the messaging is ambiguous sometimes. There's a lot of innuendos. But over the past few months, for instance, you're a bit more direct about who you're talking about and what issues you're talking about. What happened uh, for you to make that pivot? Well, it's because of the disappointment in uh, what the politicians are doing right now the crop of leaders from the top to the bottom. Um, there's just so much frustration, not only uh, to us, but to almost everyone in the country. And I think there cannot be any form of awakening without uh, people knowing who the leaders are, what they are doing, and what they are capable of doing. So uh, that's the reason why we really had to kind of give them a much clearer picture. And... Uh, maybe that might really change things down there. And how does your um, profession, I mean, obviously you're, you're, you're a teacher now, but you, you're also a journalist. How do you apply your journalistic training into the content that you're putting out there? Because there are a lot of your critics who would say, listen, Lambello is jumping on the bandwagon of some of the gossips, unverified uh, rumors about activities of politicians to make his, his content online. What, what do you say about, you know, what goes into the making of some of the contents that you're putting out there, especially with some of those issues that are neither here nor there, for instance? Well, uh, it's, uh, we're lucky to be trained uh, by Voice of America in Washington, D.C., and also uh, BBC. And there we learn, you know, all professional international journalist journalistic ethics and using that, you know, and, and working in Washington, D.C. for about four years, we learned all kinds of ways to find information, look for information, verify, and, uh, you know, know how to present that information the way it is. Um, and that's basically what I've been applying. Even though right now I don't work for anybody, and I wouldn't call what I'm doing uh, journalism, but it's very similar. Um, and so far... There's no one who has any problem with the information we put out there because we really do put effort into making sure that we have really the best information 
And if there's any problem, we will definitely retract it and uh, offer apologies. Hmm. And, and tell me about some of the feedback you've been getting about some of the contents you've been putting out, especially during the election year, during the campaigns, um, after the campaigns, looking at where Nigeria is right now as a country with all the economic conundrum that uh, people are dealing with. What are some of the feedbacks you're getting, not just from your followers who absolutely love what you do, but some of the people who don't necessarily agree with your position on some of the uh, contents that you're putting out there? Well, um, especially the ones who do not agree, they like to solve, you know, this divisive uh, narrative. They, they like to say, oh, no, this is a northerner, or this is a Muslim, brother Buhari, this and that. But to be honest, you know, if we really want to uh, move our country forward and to awaken the youth, we have to, we must, and we need to uh, cross that bridge that we, we do not have to, you know, have to separate, oh, north, east, south, south. We have to cross that because that's old politics. That's something that we've grown up to see the older people, the older generation doing. And so far, we've realized that it's not yielding any result. So we have to we have to bridge that. We have to pass that. And we have to really start looking at the issues, the main issues like insecurity. People's lives are not um, safe. Um, we, we need to have respectful lives of people. Many people, innocent people, die every single day. Um, like, you know, problems of hunger. Uh, the policies are not working. Sharing rights and palliatives is not uh, sustainable. It's not working. And also, we need to hold our leaders accountable. I think those are the issues that uh, these folks uh, should pay attention to. But they like to, you know, play politics like the old school. But I think uh, it's time to really turn a new page and a new chapter. Yeah, you talk about how you're not so sure about the influence of your content on, on, the, on the society, for instance. But, but surely a lot of people are giving you feedback in the comment sections, uh, in your interactions uh, with some of your colleagues and, and things like that. How do you see the use of social media as a tool, um, especially in light of the social political challenges that we continue to face, whether it's about social cohesion across the, the country or voter education? which in so many of your skits, you've been able to, to point out how people selling their votes for a token or spaghetti or you know, food condiments and things like that is one of the reasons why we've found ourselves in so many of these very difficult situations because of the poor choices Nigerian electorates uh, take uh, before the elections. Give me a sense of whether you think there is some sort of correlation between your messaging and people having to rethink about how they normally go about, uh, you know, understanding these issues. Um, uh, so, you know, it's difficult for a lot of people to really believe that um, social media is really creating uh, change and awareness in mostly young people across Nigeria. And, it, it, you know, before it's radio and TV, especially radio. Most people at the grassroots level, they listen to radio and, uh, you know, all the politicians, they invest in that. They have trained warriors who go to the radio stations and sell their propaganda. And that's where people get the information. And, you know, when you listen to those radio shows, a lot of times you will really think that, oh, the next big thing is here. Uh, the change is here. Uh, it's, it, everything is going to be sunshine and lollipops. But unfortunately, um, it's 2024 and we still have people who are sleeping with hunger. So that's not working. And now you have the Gen Z who are mostly on their phones and they use social media a lot. So radio's power has decreased. Radio's influence has decreased. The population of people listening to radio are decreasing by day, while the population of people using cell phones are increasing in every minute. So the message has to go through cell phones. But now you, the guys who have been used to using, cell, to using radio to pass you know, message, to fight for politicians, to sell all kind of propaganda, now they cannot use phones in that way. People who you know, gather followers and all kinds of uh, 
uh, credentials online are the ones who are really trying to sell all that information and sell influence. So it's open market. And if you really have good message, if you really know how to pass message, if you really know what is really going on with the people, and then you can really tailor information and tailor messages that will really appeal to them and catch them. And it's, it's a new way, it's a new time, and no one can stop this. I recently was in Nigeria, and uh, I went to a village to, to, you know, for medicine. While I was there, you know, the, the doctor said he knows me from TikTok. So as soon as I saw that, I realized that, you know, the days that we were thinking, oh, the people who use cell phones are only in the cities, it's over. Now they are on uh, they are on TikTok and the people who are in the villages are also getting all kinds of information. So I think that um, gave us confidence in increasing, you know, the social cohesion, increasing uh, social political awareness and also voter education to really let them know what their voting uh, power is, what they can do with their votes and how, how they can really create change and select good leaders. Now, I really want to mention a few things. For example, there's also uh, the coming up of new young people like the Rand Group on Twitter who are, let's say, uh, reawakening the Northern consciousness, um, like the likes of Amina Kano, uh, Saad Zangur, and uh, Moody speaking. These are young people who are really uh, patriotic. They're passionate about their societies and communities, and they're coming up to really take up roles of educating people, voter sensitization, sensitization and uh, really holding leaders accountable. And I believe that with those kind of young people, uh, a lot is going to happen in the future, which is positive change when it comes to um, de development of our society. Right. So let's take a step back. Uh, talk us through some of your process, because these are hardcore issues. These are quote unquote boring issues for the Gen Z's. If we're going to get into the details of corruption, accountability, good governance, political processes, most of them don't have the patience to understand that, whether it's in school, in a school setting, or in, in a social setting, for instance. These are some of the things that do not necessarily uh, entertain them. But with your satire, you're able to draw attention to that. Uh, tell me about your process and how you could make, you know, a quote-unquote boring conversation entertaining using satire? I, I think the first method is to understand the concept of marketing. And uh, marketing, you have, uh, you know, a group of people and you really want to sell a product to them. And to do that, um, first you need to know what catches their attention, uh, in what kind of format, the duration, and also uh, what language appeals. Uh, you know, our Northern uh, Nigerians, they speak Hausa, most of them, um, even though <laughs> when you get educated, you really think maybe half of the people there speak English, but actually not. So the language is very important. And also, you know, the, the duration of the message, people don't have a lot of uh, money to buy data, so it cannot be, you know, long five, seven, 10 minutes. And, um, you know, you got to create characters that they can relate to, but at the same time, it needs to be spiced up with humor because Nigerians really like humor. Mm -hmm. So I, I think those are the small little things that I just <laughs> kind of think. And, you know, I talk with my wife, I talk with my uh, friends at the Ranch HQ, I talk with, um, you know, my friend Dr. MK Hassan, I talk with my dad. And, you know, eventually we come up with something that makes sense and uh, we just try it. If, it, if it's okay, uh, it, it goes. And, but a lot of times we because we really put our heads together i, I think we do have good reason uh, what do you say to people who say Dambello is in china where a lot of the things that many nigerians are going through right now or a lot of the issues that he's trying to bring uh, to the fore he doesn't necessarily have to experience them in china for instance whether it's about basic amenities security social services and things like that um, and, and to them, that seems like an anomaly. You know, if you cannot relate to us with, with regards to the issues, how can you speak on it? And it, they, they question your genuity uh, when, when you talk about these issues. Tell me why these issues are pertinent for you and, and, and how it is not just about making a name for yourself on social media. Well, um, you know, home is home. And no matter how long I'm going to be here, I'm, I'm going to have to go back home. Um, and it's not just for me, but I think for a lot of other Nigerians, it is a good thing that there are some people out there, like, you know, me, like Bulama, like Jafar, uh, Usman Kabara, 
uh, Dr. M.K. Hassan. We are all outside and most of us are doing really well, but we really do care about our people because we have relatives, we have friends, we have classmates, um, we, we, we have our people. We have our people that, you know, we relate to in many different ways, uh, in history, in lifestyle. Uh, when we talk to each other, we look at each other, there's so much commonality. Or like, you know, these countries out here where uh, sometimes, you know, you, you kind of feel out of place. Mm. them their problems and to use the resources the knowledge uh, the wisdom and the experience that we have out here to kind of try to you know see what we could do even from distance and uh, I i'm glad that it's working because uh, you know with the, with the use of the cell phone and social media uh, it opens up more channels for people to really kind of see what is out there and to relate and now, uh, for our young people in Nigeria, they are really getting to know that they don't have a lot of difference from the young people outside all over the world. Uh, we have very intelligent people in Nigeria. We have very resourceful people, uh, creative people, hardworking people. And we are all trying to connect the dots to see where is the problem? And, you know, how can we address that problem so that we also can enjoy, we also can live safe lives? Uh, we also can have great education, we, we can have good security, and we can have justice and equal rights. Mm. So that's, uh, I, th I think that's, those are the things that we uh, out here uh, should do, should continue doing, and hopefully we can, we can help and we can contribute positively. So, so you don't think you being outside of Nigeria, living outside of Nigeria permanently, is in any way disconnecting you with the issues and the reality on ground? Well, it's a choice. You know, you choose to care or not. Um, you, you, you can choose to say, you know, I'm just going to live my life. I'm going to live a very comfortable life here and not care at all about what our people back home are, are going through. Uh, it's a choice. And we, it, it's unfortunate that, we, you know, you can count how many Nigerians really are out here in the diaspora. Um, you know, thinking about home on almost like 24 hours. Whenever we awake, we're only thinking about our homes. Uh, it's not a lot. There are people who left and never went back. There are people who their relatives have no idea where they are. Um, that's, it's sad, but, you know, Nigeria is our only home. And uh, even if we are going to lose our lives fighting for a better country, then so be it. Yeah. Uh, talking about that, let's just segue into the very hot waters of this particular conversation where there are a lot of political figures who are not taking your satire, your content lightly, who are not just unhappy about it, but are actually, uh, you know, threatening legal actions or things like that on you. Um, does that discourage you? Does that disappoint you? How, how do you feel about, you know, people who your satire is about and who are not necessarily uh, being, um, you know, a good sport about it? You know, if what I'm doing is not good for them, then that automatically means it's good for the people. Because if what they are doing is good, then no one then then no one will watch the content that I'm making, and no one will feel um, that this content is really significant and it's creating change. So that automatically says what they are doing is not enough. Uh, what they are doing is probably um, causing all these issues that we're facing. Right now, the ruling party has enacted policies that are making people hungry. People are hungry. People are dying. You have people eating grass right now. You have people drinking the water just from a washed pot. You have kids uh, who just going around knocking on doors and saying, please, we haven't ate for two or three days. This is not, uh, you know, a natural disaster. This is not a famine from lack of rainfall or from earthquake or a tsunami. These are from policies that can be avoidable. And these leaders put up those policies and have closed their eyes because I have no idea. And now they are unhappy because we are calling them out for their policies. So they want us to just keep quiet while people die? Really? 
where is our humanity? What's the point of, you know, studying and seeing how get things are done outside and seeing that people do not have to go to bed hungry in other countries and then we just keep quiet? And now they're unhappy because they get to give themselves bigger millions of Naira salaries and doing all kinds of bogus projects? Yes, I want them to be unhappy. I want them to go to court. I want them to sue. I want them to do anything they can so that we should keep quiet. That's what I want. Because that means our message and our work is getting better and better. And then we're going to push harder too. Right. Okay. On that particular note, let's talk about political um, uh, motivations. Are you apolitical? Do you have political affiliations? Do you plan on utilizing this, your newfound celebrity or influential position to drive a political movement? Because, I mean, against the backdrop of NSAS in 2020, for instance, up until the 2023 elections, we've seen the youths clamor for something outside of the establishment parties, for instance. Do you plan to, you know, capitalize on your influence and, and, and your ability to drive social conversations to perhaps lean on a political movement or something like that in the future? Well, I've never been um, affiliated to a political party and I didn't plan to because I graduated from uh, university in 2011. And since then, I started working as a journalist. And to be really good and to uh, be a professional, uh, one has, uh, shouldn't take a side. And so I, I never took a side and I don't plan to. Um, I do not plan to, you know, invest myself in the politics, but I believe that I can play a role that can really help the political system uh, get better, help youth get educated on what they should do and, you know, inspire a lot of young people to also go out there and create awareness and, you know, educate people on how to really, uh, you know, get this old school type, the old mentality out of the way, uh, sideline them and really bring a new political system. I, I want to play the role that I do very well, a teacher. I, I, I enjoy teaching. I've always wanted to be a teacher since I was a kid. And now I'm lucky to, to be doing it. And I also want to be uh, to play that role for our people uh, using media. And that's, that's where I, I, I believe that, you know, to get uh, system working in these many different parts and all these parts really need to work very well so if I can do my part very well I really do hope that you know other people who can be governors and ministers and presidents and, you know, the house of reps and all they will also learn and get enlightened and get inspired and do their roles and then we can have a great big working system that's my uh, yeah. that's my idea and I really do hope that we, you know we can have that in the near future all right, just before we wrap things up, a lot of your viewers are probably going to form 70 to 80 percent of our viewers. Uh, a lot of your followers are going to form probably 70 to 80 percent of our viewers uh, uh, tonight on the program. What would you like them to know about um, your drive, especially for those who want to see more of the same uh, going into the future? What would you like them to know? And if there are some takeaways you would, you would want them to to identify from your philosophy in life and what you think about your home country, Nigeria, what would you like them to know? Uh, I would like them to know that, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, to be different and to create change and for our country to move forward, we need a few things. One, we cannot be afraid. You know, all the people who have been afraid did not achieve anything. If you really want to create change, if you really want to enjoy yourself, if you really want to achieve your goals, you have to put fear aside and really have to work hard and you be brave. And then the second uh, and the last uh, advice and call I have for anybody listening to this program is um, work hard, uh, put in the work and, you know, get used to it. And once you get used to it, you know, work a little harder and make it a habit. And by doing that, you really can achieve things you would never imagine you can. Thank you so much. Dr. Bello Galadenchi, a.k.a. Lambello. I was looking for an opening to use your famous...
catchphrase jira 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 but you know it didn't it didn't come up so i just have to say it anyway uh thank you most kindly for giving us this opportunity to speak to you and to pick your brains on some of these issues we're glad you had uh the time to join the conversation thank you most kindly for joining us on daily politics thank you so much i appreciate it thank you so my people i hope you guys had what dambelo said here like this man is awesome honestly I wish that we can get at least 10 people like Dambelo from the North. It will definitely make a difference, honestly. And I believe that Nigeria government, they're going to get disappointed when they realize that Dambelo is not living in Nigeria because these people, they don't like truth. Whenever you talk anything against them, they will definitely come after you. But Dambelo has already said it, that he is not going to stop. He's going to expose them more until they stop all the corruption that is going on in Nigeria. So my people, that is it. I don't know what you think about what uh, Dambelo said in this particular interview, which I would love you guys to leave your thoughts in the comment section as always. Please, if today is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe for more updates. Like this video so that YouTube will recommend it to other people to watch. Share the video to your friends and family so that they will get the opportunity to watch as well. Thank you everyone that be sharing my video. I truly, truly appreciate it all. Thank you so much for your support and love. I'm going to see you guys in my next one. Goodbye for now. Welcome to Chamber Senior Steve.